name is Dr. Marky Shirk. Today I'm going to show you how to give subcutaneous fluids. I give my cat Nimitz subcutaneous fluids every day and it really is very easy and I'm hoping that after this demonstration should you be uh, asked by your veterinarian to give your cats fluids it won't be so scary for you. The first thing we need to do is connect the bag and the line. Here's a bag of fluids and here is a line. We've got to take the bottom end off of the bag, which is actually easier than it looks. And with that end out, I'm going to attach this sterile hub to, into this opening. So I took the end off and now I'm going to attach this. This takes a little bit of pressure. So you want to get it all the way in right to the hub and then the fluids will start running. You're going to end up with a wet lap if you let them keep coming. So you want to fill the bulb partway with fluids and then indeed you do need to fill the line with fluids, stopping the turning this dial when the fluids get to the very end of the line. You'll see that on the bag there are lines. This is a one liter bag, which means it has 1000 milliliters in it. You can see that the fluid line starts above the nine and that is actually, regardless of what it looks like on the bag, this is the one liter. When I go to give Nimitz fluids, I'm going to take it down to um, eight and a half because he gets, uh, he gets 150 mils a day. So that eight and a half is right at that mark there. If you've already been using the bag, you'll want to warm it before you give it to your cat. And what I like to do is just put it into a vase or vase, depending on where you're from, leaving this bulb portion out of the vase because I'm gonna fill it with boiling water or very hot water up to where the meniscus or the level of fluid is. This vase obviously isn't quite big enough for when the bag is this full. In fact, when the bag is that full, rather than warming it in a water bath in a vase or some other container, um, before you attach the line, before you attach the line, when it is just the bag, you can microwave it for two or three minutes um, uh, on high, depending on your microwave, but you want to make sure that regardless of whether you've microwaved it or rewarmed it in the in a vase that you massage it and test it on your wrist so that it isn't too warm. Once you have attached the line, you cannot microwave it or you will end up with a big wad of melted plastic instead of a line. I'm hanging it up as high as I can because the higher it is, the faster the fluid will run. Pay attention to this bulb because that's where you'll see the fluid running later on when we're giving Nimitz his fluids. If your line has a, a tab like this on it, make sure that it is open and not, uh, not uh, crimped off. Obviously we need to attach a needle to the line. The needles that I use are 18 gauge needles, that's the size of the, uh, uh, the diameter that the fluid goes through, and I like to use Teflon coated needles uh, that are happen to be made by Terumo, but there may very well be other brands that make Teflon coated needles. They slide through the skin very nicely. So I take off one needle and make sure that I don't touch the end of the needle. It needs to stay sterile. And I take off this blue cap. Again, my arthritis is not helping things. And I'm going to attach the end of that uh, line to the needle making sure that I hold on to and keep the end of this blue cap sterile because I'm going to attach it again afterwards. I hung a towel behind the bag of fluids and the bulb so it would be easier for you to see the levels of fluids and the fluids running through the bulb. This is Nimitz and Nimitz actually comes every evening when he knows it's time for his fluids and he's very keen to get them because he associates his fluids with receiving churu. He's happily eating. I'm going to lift the skin between his shoulder blades and with holding my, the needle in place, I'm pulling the skin over the needle. Then I need to open the line 
on the valve, open the, the uh, wheel on the valve so that the fluids are running. If the fluids aren't running well, what I will do is I'll rotate the needle and check then the fluids will run much more quickly when the bevel isn't up against any tissue. As you can see, I'm not really even holding Nimitz. He's very comfortable for this. I may rotate as the fluids get really full on this side. I'm going to gently pull the needle back and direct it over the other shoulder so that the fluids start to build up on the other side rather than all being on one side. When he's received 150 mils, I'm going to turn off blue clamp or close the valve before I remove the needle and he jumps off my lap. With the needle out of him, I'm going to replace the sheath carefully so I don't jab myself. I'm going to remove the line from the needle and carefully replace that blue cover onto the end of the line and everything's ready to go for tomorrow. And that's how simple giving fluids is. I hope this helps you help your kitty feel better.